Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Hacker Rank 2018 recruiting report. They interviewed over a thousand developers, and we're going to be looking at their results. What's important to them when they're looking at a candidate and questions like that. The things that you need to keep in mind when you're learning and when you're doing your resume so that you can present yourself in such a way that the, the tech recruiting, the tech hiring managers and the tech recruiters, they say, I got to call this guy. I got to call this girl. We need them on the team. And that's what uh, we're going to get a little bit of insight from these thousand tech recruiters in this video. Hey guys, I just want to do a quick shout out to my JavaScript course. If you're interested in it, it's about seven and a half hours of content. I'm still adding some stuff. I think I'm going to add some new um, ES7, ES8 content to it. You can check it out. It has algorithms in it, and uh, we go over a markdown, a little bit of Git to get you going. So uh, go ahead and check it out. There'll be a link in the description below with a coupon code so you can get it for real cheap. All right, so let's uh, just sort of skim down here. So um, uh, uh, if you want to... Here are some more information. You have all this sort of stuff. So skills. Um, they surveyed, as I mentioned, they surveyed a thousand technical recruiters and hiring managers, which are really sort of that wall that, like, that if you've heard me talk about the HR firewall, um, that's sort of what I consider part of it. Um, so, how the first off, how do tech recruiters feel about their relationship uh, in terms of with um, their clients right with us with the developers and they seem to think they're doing an excellent job most of the time um i would say that they're i think pat this isn't super important um <laughs> so uh, like how do i how why do i care how you feel about your job but uh, i think we can move on um so uh, hiring managers are roughly half as likely to say their relationship is excellent i think this is a a good indicator um, so there are technical recruiters and then there are hiring managers and one thing to keep in mind is that technical recruiters are expected to be somewhat technical they are not that they can write code but if i say angular one angular two they should know that there's a difference or if i say they should understand that there's different stacks and how they work and having talked with many technical recruiters and hiring managers it varies right i know um you know, shout out to a coding channel that one of the uh, tech recruiters told me about that I haven't heard of. Um, there is uh, a channel called Coding Blonde. And so she does um, interviews and topic oriented videos. And that happened to be a channel that this specific tech recruiter was watching to just get up to date and learn and, and grow. And so I feel I the thing the reason I'm saying that is I feel like hiring managers are less likely to have that aspect because they have to hire everybody. It's not a technical hiring manager a lot of times. And so when they're hiring for HR, when they're hiring for marketing, when they're hiring for um, you know, maybe digital marketing or, you know, and IT and you know, customer support, all that sort of stuff, they don't have time to dive into the technical because they're they're more of a generalist and a specialist. So it's not too surprising to think that they're not doing an excellent job. Um, so, is there a mismatch in how to measure success? Uh, so, recruiters, what are the top three most important success metrics in tech recruiting? So, um, these are the things that when the recruiters are looking, and the, re the reason, you might say, Dylan, how is this one relevant to us as developers? Well, you now know, you have an idea here of, of what is important to the person that you have to get by, right? Um, if, if you know that hey, the quality of skills and fit is is the number one item. You need to sell yourself on how how you're going how you have these skills and how you're going to be a good fit for the environment. And you're going to be looking at future performance, retention. You know, you're going to need a good answer when they say why are you why are you leaving your current workplace if you're going from a one dev job to another. You're going to need a good answer for how you're going to continue to grow for future performance. Oh, look at this wonderful Wonderful air right in the middle of the video. Uh, so uh, you're gonna need a good answer for you know ramp time, things like that. You know, hey, I you know I expect the first three months that I'm gonna be at home every weekend studying and getting going. These are the sorts of topics that you need to have conversations, at answers ready because these are the concerns of a technical recruiter or hiring manager. Yeah, we can skip that one. I don't care about this. So the biggest pain point 
is finding the right candidate. And this is one of those things that uh, I, I want you to change your mindset because a lot of times that a lot of times what happens is people are like, oh, how can I trick them into getting me a job? Or like I go to a meetup and like I've had these questions like, hey, go to a meetup and, you know, sometimes they're hiring, and, you know, reach out. Companies want to hire people like that's the thing is they have an opening and they want to give it to you. The thing that happens is that you just sometimes shoot yourself in the foot. And what I mean by that is that they want they want to hire you and thus please be able they when when someone comes in for a technical interview we're hoping that they pass the technical interview we're hoping that they go up there all right cool man you made it here all you gotta do is you gotta whiteboard this problem out and we're moving forward that's it man we really want you to move forward we don't want you know nobody wants to sit in there and and watch people fail and we want you to be successful because we have an opening and we want it to be filled right because now um you know that that is what we're trying to accomplish it's the same with recruiting here so don't think that recruiters are out to to maybe shut you down because in reality a lot of them are commission based so they really have an incentive and even the ones that are in the office um which brings up a good point is that when we're talking about um you know sort of company recruiters uh meaning in-house recruiters so let's say you're working at microsoft they might have a outside agency like maybe texas somewhere they're hiring from um but they might also have the the in-house recruiter um the in-house recruiter is often looking for a more long-term fit and they're 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 usually a little bit less commission based and so they're going to be looking for somebody who is going to be a more of a culture fit of who is going to be there so is going to be there long term these are things that you know to consider depending on who you're talking to and how to sell yourself right so it doesn't matter if you're the best product in the world that's really what you are as a developer you are a product and because you are our product you need to sell yourself to the store right if you have an apple and you're trying to sell yourself to the grocery store you need to explain to them why this apple needs to be on their shelf you're the same way right and so you need to sell yourself and you have to understand your audience for that um and that's why i recommend you start focusing on your people skills which is something so few people do and it causes a lot of issues down the road so how are they finding how are people finding candidates how, how is that happening um, you can see here internal referrals. There's nothing unique about that. Uh, if you have ex coworkers that are that are um, you know that you could reach out to that have gone on to other co companies, it's an excellent. It's the number one choice here. Internal referrals. Almost six out of ten jobs here. Six out of ten. Um, six out of ten options. Sixty percent of the time, this is one of the go tos. I guess is the way of looking at it. And then job portals. So for all of you who say that you can't find a job, no one answers back to job applications, no one answers back, job portals is like LinkedIn, ZipRecruiter, Indeed. These are all things that people are are searching through to, to move forward. Coding communities, university recruiting, social media and blogs. How many times have I told you to start a, a, uh, a blog? How many times have I told you to start a unique product, a unique, a unique, uh, you know side project like youtube um so these these are things that hackathons meetups these are all excellent ways that that tech re technical recruiters go to hire so don't think that it's all just talk right i i recommend things because i've seen them work and i you know here we are a thousand the, a thousand people here who have all the same job about getting you a job and hiring you this is how they go about it this is where they find um you know most effective um so what would you invest in most to strengthen your technical recruiting process this is something that i i this is their this is how they want to bring on the best developers i would say how how they would have this so um skill assessments i really hate the way that skill assessments are done i think they're a bad example um you know you have take-home projects you also have uh, whiteboard interviews and most of the time uh whiteboard problems are very difficult now if you get an easy white board interview and i've been at places where this is before i was a dev they would have developers come in and they would just have them whiteboard out how to reverse a string and what in their language of choice uh in this in this example is javascript and you can't do something like that um you know you're, you're not moving forward you're not ready yet as far as i'm concerned those are very basic ones if you go up and you can't do fizz buzz you're gonna fail any in person on a whiteboard 
you're gonna fail any skill assessment and and that's on you now there are a lot of very difficult whiteboard problems uh, as you continue to move forward but um, this is you can see right here this is the number one sort of item that's moving forward and we can switch over here Ooh, look at that tech recruiters improve sourcing I wonder what that means so there's a big difference here between the tech recruiters um, I don't know what tech talent branding is. Well, we'll look that up. Let's you know, let's go ahead and look that up real quick because I don't. What is tech talent branding? Oh, are you kidding me right now? Come on, man. We'll come. Back. All right, we'll come back to that. I'm not downloading anything right now. So okay, so this is another thing that I I, I really found really insightful. So. Um, Tech recruiters are outgrowing resume-based hiring. So what does that mean? Well, um, it means that things like, let's just read it. Tech hiring managers and recruiters are finding that resume bolstering factors like degree, prestige, and skilled keywords aren't good measurements of whether someone will be successful on the job. So they're looking to indic indicators that demonstrate abilities such as previous work experience, years of experience, and personal projects. While these qualifications aren't perfect, they're actually closer to the heart of what makes a good programmer skill. How many times have I told you that all everything's a factor? Everything is a factor on your resume. Not just where being a software developer is one of the unique ways where we have measurable skills. And our measurable skills can be tested. There's a lot of degrees out there and a lot of jobs where sometimes you need a degree just to be in the industry and there's no way around that for certifications, but there's a lot of jobs in it, any company where you don't really need a degree and it's hard for, for you to have measurable skills. Software, we have measurable skills and, and talents and you're seeing here that in 2018, the, you know, the prestigious skill keywords and degrees are losing more and more value and being replaced with things like work experience, years of experience, and personal projects. Personal projects are great because they're looking for someone who's passionate, who's going to move forward, right? We already saw that, and going to continue learning. And we start a personal project and there's nothing behind you but you being motivated and growing. Keep that, keep that in mind. So you can see right here, this is of the thousand, this is what they're looking for. Uh, when, they when they combine hiring manager and, um, and uh, uh, tech recruiters. So you can see the top three here. Personal projects. Bam. Personal projects are actually related higher than computer science or related degree. Look at that. Not by much, but true. Portfolio right there. Open source contributions, skill certifications. These are all things that you can do today and get started with. So uh, three out of four recruiters and hiring managers have hired great candidates who didn't look good on paper. So how, how, how do you go about that? Well, what happens is a lot of, a lot of people have, don't understand how to write a resume. <laughs> I think a lot of it. And, um, what you, what you'll find out is that, uh, or traditional education, right? So, uh, that's what they're basically saying right here, uh, that didn't have a strong resume, meaning traditional education. 75% have said, look, we're willing to move past the fact that you don't need a good, you don't need a CS degree to be here if you can do the job if you have the skills we're, we're we're gonna work with you right we're gonna we're gonna get you in here because we want we want you to succeed and all you need to have is the ability to accomplish the job at the end of the day so there's a lot more going on here uh ai with the hiring process methodology all that sort of stuff um i'm gonna go ahead and and they talk a little bit more about uh you know, where they got this information, all that sort of stuff. I'll, I'll, again, I'll put this in the link in the uh, description down below. But I just wanted to share this with you because I think it's really important because a, a lot of people, they just don't believe it's possible. They, they, they just have it in their head that, you know, there's no way, you know, I have to have a CS degree. You can see right here, personal projects are there. And that's not to say CS degrees aren't worth anything. They're very related. They're, it's a very good thing to have. It does nothing but help, but it is a big time and skill investment. I just want you to know that it's one part of it, the overall spectrum of of how we're moving forward and how we're we're grinding right and how we're continuing to, to grow as a developer and not to think that there's only one thing holding you back 
um, change that mindset and, and keep working hard. So um, I appreciate you guys watching this video. I thought this was a very interesting thing to look at because at the end of the day, this is that wall we have to scale. This is the thing that we need to overcome to be successful as software developers. So, um, you know, thank you so much. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can know when I release new videos. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, share. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, I just wanted to share this comment for Bo Carnes. For those of you who are not familiar with Bo Carnes, Bo Carnes uh, finished the WGU uh, Bachelor um, of Software Development, the, the program I dropped out of, uh, in about six months, which is really phenomenal. And uh, you know, if you actually look to sign up through their program, they're going to actually forward you his blog. It's been sort of a, a runaway hit with their program. And I just wanted to share his thoughts on it because he had commented on the video here just to give you an idea uh, because even though he was successful, with it, it wasn't because he went to WGU. So it says, I'm glad I did not drop out of WGU. Like you said, I was studying to pass the test. I also agree that the content is out of date. However, my main goal was to get a degree and I got the degree. Most of the stuff I use at my job as software developer, I learned on how my on my own and not from WGU, but I think that is true for most college degrees. Actually, now that I think about it, the main benefit of my WGU degree was being able to write a very popular article about how I finished quickly. This article led to more things helpful for my career than my actual degree. So when the reason I say that is not only to sort of comment on the program, I think that's important because this is their, their golden boy that they like to showcase, uh, um, but also, because it's the side project that made him successful. It wasn't. It wasn't actually going and doing the degree from his, from his own words here. It was the side project of creating a blog and writing about his experience and you know moving moving forward and, and grinding and you know that's what's actually made him successful. So I just wanted to share that. I want to thank our sponsor, TemplateMonster.com. Not only can you buy templates, PowerPoints, resumes anything that you can think of, portfolio sites. You can also sell yours on their platform and earn a nice side income. There's a link in the description below to check them out at templatemonster.com.